If you'd like some advice on PA equipment or DJ equipment, please do take a look through the uploads on my channel. Please do like and subscribe as there just could be some valuable information uploaded just for you. Yes, that's true, I've done it. But whatever you do, don't try this at home because you'll invalidate your warranty. It's not even a year old. Bose will know. And bang goes the warranty. But it shouldn't go wrong, right? So after taking the 14 screws off at the back, they're like a countersunk Torx head wood screw holding on the amplifier with all the inputs. You can see on the outer edge where it's been routed so that the flange of the amplifier can sit inside so it's flush on the outside with the cabinet. And just a quick detailed look at the amplifier. And the whole unit weighs around six pounds. There it is. Just having a look inside, you can see the bracing. Some of it is around 10 mil. And some around 12 mil. You can see where it's been fixed and glued together. You can see up on the left, they've actually got a tie for the cables to keep them where they need to be. This sub is made of a double skin ply. You could definitely see one ply is 10 mil and the other one I think is 12. I thought there would have been one sheet, but no, you can clearly see there's two sheets of ply. That may be glued, but definitely screwed together. You can also see where the top handle is. And more screws up above. That no doubt is holding the two plies again together. And in the side, you can see where the pole mount is fixed. And there is the famous racetrack driver because it's the shape of a stadium. Please, the hype is killing me.
Think of it more as a look inside rather than a tear down. I think I can see what I need to see and I don't really want to go any further. I don't want to disturb any more dampening or any more materials that are crucial to eliminate resonance. It's bad enough invalidating the warranty. I'd like to still keep this in working condition. Moving on to the column, I don't know why, but I was surprised to see that this is one sheet of aluminium that's been pressed and formed to slide over all the drivers. I like it. Clever work. Very minimalist and simple design. Never really considered it to be one sheet. This is the plastic frame that all of the drivers sitting. Just off 90 degrees to each other, a little more of an obtuse angle. And you can see where they have these ports and where they're situated on the outer casing. What's very interesting if you look at the 16 drivers on the column is you count and then you get to the middle. You can clearly see that these are two eights joined together. So obviously half of this would be in the Pro 8, all of this would be in the Pro 16, just joined together. which is revealed on the cap that this is for the Pro 8, the Pro 16 and the Pro 32. All the wiring that's going through it, no need for me to split it up. It's just nice to see that there's two sections. And this is what is behind one of the drivers. can't actually pull these spade ends off. They might be the ones that lock in. Well, I think they are the ones that lock in, so I can't remove them. But you can see what you need to see. The drivers have the same yellow woven mesh that you see on the racetrack driver in the Sub 2. Next, I'll reveal what's in the base, open that up, see what amplifier is in that, and just show you what's going on. Thank you for watching.